From the Sumire Foundation and Connor B. Judge Foundation, this is Demystifying NMO. Welcome back to Demystifying NMO. Once again, I'm Chelsea Judge, Scientific Advisor of the Connor B. Judge Foundation. This is our season finale of season one. We've Loved bringing you guys this content to help um, bring together the NMO community, empower you with information that you need to manage your NMO, and talk about things that aren't talked about enough. On the final episode, we have Sumaira of the Sumaira Foundation. She is the founder. She is a woman extraordinaire, uh, balancing um, living with NMO with her thriving career, also with the pandemic all while being a leader and champion in the NMO community. So really excited to have her on the pod today. We're going to have a recap of our episodes, the highs and the lows, our goals, and what is to come. So let's get into it. Welcome, Sumaira of the Sumaira Foundation. Oh, thanks for having me, Chelsea. Sumaira has been our co-producer, collaborator, champion, um, representative of community needs um, throughout this podcast. So we're really happy to have you on and kind of do a rehash of this season. Oh, I'm so excited. It's been a really awesome season and um, I can't wait to see what we come up with for season two. Me too. I'm so excited, but I wanted us to maybe um, rehash or be more open with our listeners about what was like the goal of doing Demystifying NMO. Well, you know, we've tried a number of different things for the foundation to raise awareness and educate both um, the patient community and the medical community. Mm -hmm. And while much of our stuff has been very visual and people absorb that information really well, I thought it would be nice to try a podcast because I know personally I love listening to podcasts and I absorb a lot of information just by hearing people talk. So I wanted to give our viewers and our audiences a another means of getting their information and you're such a good host and thank you. you wanted to do this with us so I thought why not let's just try it and see what happens agreed and like everybody has their own podcast right now so why not us we can tell it's been pretty well received right yeah I think so um the NMO is a tight-knit although rare community um they're definitely I think, hungry for information. And what I think we've realized is um, candid information. And so I think what our goal was, was to create this sense of community, maybe, you know, provide good content information, empower the NMO community. And then what we've learned along the way is to make it as candid as possible on all things NMO, especially in including things that aren't discussed enough. A hundred percent. And I think the other thing to note, too, is that the experts that we've been able to recruit for our episodes, they're usually not very accessible to no fault of their own, but it's just because they're so busy in their clinics. They're busy with research and academia and doing talks here and there. And while we've been able to um, see them speak publicly, let's say, at a seminar or at a patient day, it's never like a two-way communication type Mm -hmm. of thing. And that's what I think the podcast was really good at doing, you know, making it a little more informal and conversational and probably just making it seem more personable and and our, and our, um, and our speakers more personable. Oh, amen. I think for me, Michael being a recovering scientist, ha ha ha, is to make sure that science and medicine are approachable and accessible to everyone. You don't have to have a fancy degree or be at a fancy conference. Um, it should be something that's digestible and and friendly. So I hope I hope we're getting there at least with this podcast. I hope so too, and I think you definitely are. You've been crushing it. Thank you. So, Sumaira, let's talk about our first episode, which was, you know, like more difficult, a little rough, you know, as like any pilots are, where we talked about the autoimmune disease and NMO overview. Yeah. That one was scripted. 
And, it was. And, it was our first shot ever, so I still think we did a great job. But, you know, the both of us know that we learned a lot from that mm-hmm. episode. We learned a lot about how we wanted to conduct the future episodes, how the, um, the, the listeners would receive it. And um, it was a great starting point. And while it was very science-heavy, there was a lot of wonderful and valuable information in there. And I think you and Austin both did a a great job of of delivering that uh, heavy information. Thank you. Yeah. And I think what we learned from that, as you pointed out, is that we really think it's best if it's more natural and conversational, so not scripted, right? in order to really meet the needs of the NMO community and what I just talked about, making things more um, approachable and digestible. Our second episode, which was um, based on our numbers, actually the most listened to one, was about NMO treatments. So, oh, is that right? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, so far anyways, you know, things can change. It's a moving target. But I think it's because it was this combination of like science and conversation. That was the one that I did with my brother, Connor. That's right. Mm-hmm. So I think that was starting to get more like on par with what we want to do. We're having like a natural patient relevant conversation on science and medicine, but totally casual. And I love that we included Connor, right? Yes. I mean, he's kind of behind the scenes, but he is obviously a very relevant subject in all of this. And the fact that he was so candid and really spoke his mind again had a tremendous value. Yeah. And when we had done that episode, that was Oh my goodness, I think back in September or October, I don't know. But when we were doing a review of all of the treatments, we were we have to update it because we did not include the latest one in Ebolizumab. We kind of talked about it, but it wasn't approved at the time. So woohoo, we now have another um, FDA approved treatment, which I think is just so exciting to see how fast things are going for NMO now. Yeah, we're doing a lot, girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of stuff is happening. It's it's almost unbelievable sometimes. I I, I will get all these Google alerts on a a daily basis. It used to be once a week when I first got ill with this. I would get Google alerts once a week. And now sometimes I get three, four alerts a day. Wow. So I think it goes to show you that people are listening. Um, People care. We're, you know... We're headed in the right direction, and as I've been saying lately, especially with our second FDA-approved drug, that our future really is very bright, and um, I never fully, fully believed it until now, and and now I can say with full confidence, we're going to be okay in the end. Mm, I wish I could hug you right now. Um, <laughs> I, it's so hopeful, and it's so true, and and just as you're pointing out, we're like being inundated with Google alerts on NMO, like that's... That's not a problem. That's just like a great overwhelming, like that's overwhelming in a good way, like being blasted with information. It's unbelievable. I mean, you know, we have some ambassadors on our team who have had NMO for 20, 30 Mm -hmm. years. And for them, they're just like in disbelief because they went the majority of their diagnosis without really not many options Mm -hmm. and not much dialogue around the disease. So to have all of this, you know, in such a short period of time, I feel like the last couple of years have been just boom, 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 updates, updates, yeah. new things, new developments. It's, it's, it's incredible. And I, I, again, I think it goes to show you that, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. And this, I think, is a testament to the community and to all of us who have really been um, working together to, to make our voices be heard. And on that note, I think it's a good transition to talk about our third episode that we did, which was on gratitude through NMO. So kind of Of finding those silver linings through, as you would say, illuminating the darkness of, of NMO. Yeah. I was really, really, really grateful to the to the NMO warriors who came on to talk about their experiences and finding gratitude through some of what I was calling like the difficult feelings um, or experiences of NMO. Chelsea, Ron, and Marie. Oh my goodness, they blew Love me away. Oh, I know, I know, and you know, it, it's not even that. Of course, those three are. I'm I'm biased for them. They all have special places in my heart, but. Every NMO patient Mm -hmm. I talk to, I feel, expresses so much gratitude. And that, just experiencing that, hearing that, and Mm -hmm. seeing that, is so empowering. I mean, it's very encouraging, too. I always say that there's 
when you get afflicted with some kind of a tragedy, and in this case, for many of us, getting diagnosed with this was a tragedy, you know, yeah. you can go one of two ways. You can um, either sort of wallow in misery mm-hmm. and uh, go down this dark hole of depression and self-pity and etc cetera, etc cetera. or you can try to make uh what is the expression it's like lemonade out of lemons Ooh, right yeah yeah and i i see an overwhelming um number of people in our community who have chosen the more challenging route which is to make the best of the situation which is to try to see all of the silver linings which in many cases is very hard to do yeah absolutely um, so i i agree that that episode was uh, particularly one of my favorites because it was was so raw it was Mm -hmm. so real it was during thanksgiving when everyone's already kind of looking within and reflecting and just very encouraging it was definitely one of i think it was probably well i obviously it was it was special to me to do the episode with my brother and i guess my husband but I, i think that was probably my favorite episode to record because we touched on all those hard feelings that nmo brings like depression and anger and anxiety and isolation all those things that you know just we as a society don't openly discuss or still sort of stigmatize and 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 the bravery, the willpower of all of those people coming on, being open, being honest, and then that they found like beauty in their situation and, and like it, it empowered them going through all of that adversity and, and finding all those silver linings. I mean, like it's the definition okay. of inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Very touching. Ugh. And then um, in our fourth episode, it was a little raunchy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I remember when we were brainstorming about this and, and deciding whether we were ready to do something like this or not. I'm really glad we did. And I liked our title. Let's talk about Sex Baby with Dr. Kaplan. I, I was so grateful to her for coming on and providing her clinical insight over this I don't know, quote unquote, taboo subject. It's really not. It's another, it's, not. it's a, it's no, life. exactly. It's another human function, basically. And in, in an issue, unfortunately, in NMO. And if you don't openly talk about something, like how are we going to address it? Right. Yeah. So really grateful for her. Absolutely. And I do think that maybe while people didn't totally come out and say, oh my God, thanks for talking about sex, guys. Um, <laughs> I do think that they that they appreciated it because it is something that's relevant and it is something that we all struggle with. And you know what, honestly, whether you have NMO or not, it's a, a thing that a lot of people struggle with. So to be able to talk about it with an expert like that, especially as it relates to NMO, is so, I thought it was a gift. And I'm really glad we decided to do it. Me too. And then after that, we had... Dr. Galetta, who works with Dr. Kaplan, hop on the pod, and we talked in a couple of episodes about pregnancy and then postpartum considerations, which, woof, like, that, those are beasts of a topic that, you know, I am, I'm not experienced um, in personally or professionally. They just were, I would say, like, a whirlwind of information. A hundred percent. And again, another sort of touchy subject, Mm -hmm. but I'm so glad that we did it because there are so many women I know in the community, myself included, who wonder about these things, you know, and while it's not taboo, it's not widely talked about, you know, when we go to these patient days and seminars and and what have you, um, not much of the, the topics are focused around this. So I think going forward, um, especially with season two, let's look at other areas of women's health where we can really tap into and help people understand better. Oh, definitely. We have to have a continuing conversation on that. And if anyone's listening to this episode and they haven't yet listened to those um, and they're either they're you don't even have to be female. You're just considering starting a family and you're wondering about the impacts of NMO or any of the potential treatments. I highly recommend it because Dr. Kaplan and Dr. Galetta, I mean, they they really got into it. It was really good information. Yeah, for sure. And, and those two are fabulous. They are. Oh, and, and, and they're the definition, I think, of approachable clinicians. A hundred percent. I love them. They're great. And then COVID happened. Oh, shoot me. (laughs) Yeah, not fun. 
we had originally planned like a whole episode on navigating insurance and healthcare, which is a beast to begin with. And we were like, wait, is this what people want right now? And so we tried to make it a little bit more COVID relevant. And we had Marissa Shackleton on from the Elliott Lewis Institute. And she is like a beast of knowledge. Right. Um, yeah. And she, she was is an expert in her in her field for sure. And I was amazed because I came to her asking, hey, I know Congress just passed this COVID-19 legislation that's related to health care. Do you can you talk about it with us? And she did. Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she's something else, and honestly, I I couldn't even provide half the information that she did in that episode. And again, so well received by our community. These are questions and answers that are really difficult to access mm-hmm. because, as we know, insurance is like a behemoth of an institution, yes. and navigating it is just a, it's kind of like a job on its own. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, no, she's wonderful, and she she definitely helped a lot of us understand how to navigate the insurance world with with our situation. Yeah, and I I really appreciate her and her emphasis on and her passion on advocating for access to quality, affordable healthcare coverage. So big thanks to her. And huge. Huge. Um, she does great work for the community and for other patients. And then our the last episode we did was all about pain. Uh, what a pain in my NMO. Uh, <laughs> have to say major thanks to Dr. Bhattacharya for covering, I mean, honestly, all things pain management and NMO. My big takeaway, and I want to emphasize not, I mean, you, there's a lot of MS warriors out there, but the pain is more common and more prevalent, maybe more intense in NMO. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it breaks my heart to know that, but I I know it, right? I live it every day, and I I, I particularly love that episode because it was there was something in it for everyone, you know. Um, If you wanted to take a more holistic Mm -hmm. path, there's something in it for for those types of people. If you wanted to take medications or look at health and wellness on how to manage your pain, there was something um, for that as well. So I think Dr. Bajajaria did such a nice job of really laying out all the different options for how to manage chronic pain. Agreed. And I think that it was really important um, in how he um, highlighted importance of managing expectations of treatment efficacy and, and totally agree with you. So important to not only talk about pharmaceutical or medica- medications considerations, but also those lifestyle um, incorporations as well. Yeah, for sure. And being open minded to, you know, to different um, treatment approaches. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just going to go there. The fact that he talked about CBD was great. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if he was going to. (laughs) Yeah, he was very open-minded about it. And his summary was like, look, pain medications in general are only, you know, to a certain extent effective. And it may be for some patients, these cannabidiol products might be just as efficacious. So whatever works for you, as long as it does you no harm and you're working with your doctor. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's like choose your own adventure. (laughs) I like that. So, Sumaira, what is next? Oh, wow. There's so much, and and I'm really happy to be able to say that. So, what's next, I guess, for the foundation is that I would love to do season two. So excited about that. Um, We are going to do, also do um, a Facebook Live series once a month for the next year. Like the COVID series you did where you asked the experts? Uh, that's right. So it's going to be uh, from the experts uh, that is going to be sponsored by Viala Bio through a patient education grant. And similar to demystifying NMO, we're going to be choosing topics that are prevalent and relevant and not as talked about as some of the other things. Um, so that's really exciting. And we're trying to diversify our speakers and, mm-hmm. and um who we involved. So I'm looking forward to meeting more NMO experts around the country, around the world, and, and getting them more involved in, in TSF and CBG 
JF work. We also just uh, announced all of our new ambassadors. So we have I now saw that. So 19 exciting. ambassadors, which is very exciting for us. And we two of those 19 are international. So that's one of them is from the UK and the other is from South Africa. <laughs> um, so we're hoping to You've do gone a global. Lot of great work and spread awareness um, and do some programming outside of you know, our hub here in the Northeast. The gala is still a question mark. Yeah, COVID. All sort of dependent on when we get a vaccine. Um, I'm going to put a little plug. People who are listening to this, wear a mask when you go out in public around other people that you don't live with and keep your distance and wash your hands and just be a smart, compassionate person. Thank you. Thank Sorry. you. Yes, no, that's a perfect plug. In fact, TSF is going to be um, selling masks soon, too. And ooh, ooh, I will buy money. one and giving it away to everybody I see who is not wearing one. There you go. And then we should note, um, Chelsea, that you and I are coming together once again for the Pets of NMO calendar 2021. Yeah, please submit your dogs if you haven't already. Yeah, dogs, cats, frogs, whatever <laughs> animal is helping you at home get through all of this. Um, we want to feature them. So, um, yeah, look out for, I think we are accepting admissions right now, submissions until August. So please go on our website and do that. But um, all of the proceeds from those calendars go to TSF and the Connor B. Judge Foundation so that we can continue funding research and doing awesome programming like this. Yeah, so Myra, thank you. It's a pleasure to work with you, to chat with you. You are a ray of sunshine and and, <laughs> and, and not only like an inspiration being an being a person living with NMO, you're just also just like I said, um, you know, real pleasure to work with. So thank you oh, for this. Thank you, Chelsea. My, the pleasure is mine. Um, I've loved working with you, Pam, Connor, um, coming out to Ohio and seeing what you guys are doing. And I'm really excited for this relationship to continue growing. And, you know, I keep saying it to everybody, you know, we're not doing this alone. We're all doing this together. Exactly. Uh, it is a community. This family, we fight together. We advocate together. We are going to find a cure together. Mm, virtual hug, Sumaira virtual hug even though I hate that word now but yes <laughs> virtual hug for sure and I hope I can give you a real hug whenever the vaccine comes out and it works amen thank you I really enjoyed that conversation with Sumaira recapping everything that we've done so far on this podcast on demystifying NMO it's been a great first season we've learned a lot we learned what works what we think doesn't work. And um, we covered a lot of topics and we are really excited to cover more in season two, but we want and need your feedback. The whole point of this is to bring together the NMO community to strengthen it and to help fill the gaps with maybe some unmet educational needs or questions about NMO. So please check out our website, sumirefoundation.org and connorbjudgefoundation.org. You can also follow us on social media at the Sumira Foundation and at CBJVNMO. Find us on Apple Podcasts. Leave us reviews. Tell us what you want to hear, the experts you'd like to have us feature. This is for you, and we really want to help foster this really awesome NMO community even more. So thank you for listening to us. We appreciate you. We love being a part of this community.